We've reviewed a bunch of PowerA products in the past, and today PowerA has sent in a whole line of Nintendo Switch controllers that visually look pretty interesting. These controllers are a little bit cheaper than the ones you'd probably be getting directly from Nintendo, but does that mean that they operate the same way, and should you be playing games with them? Well, let's find out. As many of you probably already know, I'm a pretty big fan of the Nintendo Switch Pro controllers directly from Nintendo. These official controllers are, in my opinion, some of the best controllers Nintendo has ever made. They look great, feel great, and are incredibly responsive. But what makes these controllers that much more interesting is that they're loaded with tons of additional features, like motion controls and stuff like that. But these additional features can cause problems to third parties that are trying to make controllers themselves for the Nintendo Switch. And this is something that I think many companies have struggled with, and Power A has tried to do something a little bit different with these controllers here. One of the biggest complaints out there for the Nintendo Switch Pro controllers directly from Nintendo is that they tend to cost a heck of a lot. These controllers here from Power A are coming in at a much more reduced cost, which I think is going to help a lot of people out there that want to get a controller. But of course that means that they had to do a couple of things to bring the cost down. First up, these are wired controllers and not wireless. That means that if you want to play with these controllers, you're going to have to be in some close proximity to the Switch itself. A good thing, though, is that this does come with a very long USB cable. Unfortunately, though, the USB cable is actually USB micro and not USB-C, which means that if you want to use it, you're going to have to plug it up to the Nintendo Switch dock and not the Nintendo Switch directly. Another thing you're going to be missing out on is HD rumble, or in fact, any rumble whatsoever. For some games, that might be a problem because the games use rumble as a way to notify the gamer of something, but that will really vary from game to game, and the majority out there really don't use rumble in that way way more of just a fun little thing that just lets you know that something's happening in the game. Like you're hitting the side of a wall in a racing game or something similar like that. There's also no NFC sensor inside the controller, so you won't be able to tap amiibos on it, but hey, that's a feature that not many of us really use on the Pro Controller anyway. And finally, the last feature that's missing from these Power A controllers is motion controls. I feel that this is going to be a pretty big hurdle for a lot of gamers to get around because, well, the Switch really is a game system that utilizes motion controls a lot in plenty of its games. For games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Splatoon 2, you can turn off the motion controls, but there are other games out there that don't have that option. And because of that, you might find that these controllers are useless for you to play a specific game. There are plenty of games on the Switch that don't use motion controls, so just make sure that you know what you're getting into when you get one of these things. But now, let's get into the good stuff. Just because these are cheaper controllers, it doesn't mean that they skimped out on making good designs. Take a look at this Splatoon 2 controller. It actually has a very nice design with good printing on it, and if you didn't know any better, you probably would have assumed that it was straight from Nintendo themselves. Unlike all the other controllers we're going to be taking a look at in a second, this one has two thumbsticks that are colored pink but it definitely stands out when compared to the rest. But something all these controllers have in common though are the button layouts and all of that stuff, including chrome D-pads that change color from design to design. For instance, on the Zelda Breath of the Wild variant of this controller, it has a gold D-pad. It also has some different colored pieces of plastic here and there, but everything generally just feels the same. On the bottom right of every single one of these controllers, you'll find a character from the video game series they're based off of. So for that Splatoon one, you'll find a squid. For Zelda Breath of the Wild, you'll find Link. And for the two Super Mario themed controllers we have, you'll get Yoshi and you'll get Bowser. Now these designs couldn't be farther apart. Yoshi is nice and green, while the other one with Bowser is red and black. And it really is up to your choice of what one you think is better, but I promise you they basically feel exactly the same in your hands. But it's not just Nintendo properties alone that Power A decided to utilize. They also have a Crash Bandicoot variant that kind of looks pretty neat. It's black with some cool blue outlines, and it's something that I really wasn't expecting from the lineup. But my absolute favorite design from all of the ones that were sent in was the Donkey Kong variant. This one I think stands out the most. It's got brown plastic on the back and yellow plastic on the front that makes it kind of look like a banana, which is kind of fun. Donkey Kong's character design is really well done on the bottom right with a cartoon 2D appearance. I also like the sparse use of red in the buttons and the D-pad, but what really makes this work for me is the background design. It has a look of almost spray painted bananas and barrels that really fits in tune with what Donkey Kong is all about. So as you can see, they've put a lot of time and effort into making these controllers look a specific way. But does that mean the controllers actually perform well? Well, let's take a closer look. 
The feel of the controller overall has a bit of weight to it, but not enough to make it feel like there's a lot going on inside of it. It just feels like a solid controller, which is important and not hollowy and plasticky. Though the controller itself does feel like plastic without any rubberized grips or anything like that, the thumbsticks feel either rubberized or with a soft touch plastic that gives you a little bit of extra grip when you're moving your thumbs around, which is a nice added touch. All of the face buttons are nice and responsive, which is very important for a controller like this. You'll also find that the shoulder buttons, both the left and right ones, are also nice and and clicky, but what makes it more interesting is that the ZL and ZR buttons are not just analog triggers that are haphazardly placed in the controller. They're just buttons like they should be, so they work great with Switch games. Both triggers have very little travel, but that's very important, because no Switch game out there was made to use analog triggers, which means you need the shortest amount of travel possible to get the fastest response from your games. This makes playing games like Splatoon a lot better. There's a very interesting design choice when it comes to the top of the controller here. You've got a USB micro slot right at the top, but they've kind of indented it. Now, typically this would be something I really wouldn't like because if you had any existing USB wire in your collection right now, it might not fit in there because of the way it's designed. But each one of these controllers comes with an eight foot USB cable that has a specific end that just fits in there perfectly. The connection is so snug, you simply don't have to worry about the USB cable falling out, which is something that happens with a lot of third party controllers that I've used in the past. And with this, at least, I don't feel it's gonna be happening a lot. If at all. A couple of items about this controller that I found to be a little bit off was that, well, the thumbsticks seem to be kind of oversized a bit. It's kind of weird to explain, but they just feel bigger than the typical controllers I've used. You might use this controller and not notice a difference at all, but for someone like me that plays with a lot of controllers all the time, it was something that was very evident right away. It didn't feel like it had any impact on how I played any of the games, but something that did have an impact was the D-pad. The D-pad is fairly good. It does have a central pivot, but it's squishy enough that it causes problems. You'll notice here while I'm playing Legend of Zelda moving left and right really quick that it typically works very well when I'm tapping it. But when I try to roll to the left and right back and forth really quickly, sometimes it would activate up and down. Once I played with it for a while, I kind of worked it around so that I didn't have to worry about that problem too much. But it is something that people are gonna notice when they're playing with games on the D-pad. It might not be perfect, but the D-pad is far from being a huge problem. It's just something you need to be aware of when you're going to play with this controller. I think there's gonna be a lot of gamers out there that really like using this controller and picking one up at its price point gives you a big savings compared to getting the official stuff from Nintendo. I think you're gonna be able to control your games fine, especially if they don't use motion controls, and I believe that gamers are gonna be okay with what they've got here. I don't think you're gonna be getting something that's super premium, but you're definitely not getting something that's very cheap. Every single one of these controllers has a flashy visual aesthetic that you may assume all the money went into when they were designing these things, but it's clear to me at least that they spent some time making these controllers work well. So not only do you get a controller that looks interesting, but you also get one that you may actually be able to play games with. How about that? I'd personally recommend this product for anybody out there looking for a cheaper secondary controller for the Nintendo Switch. And like I mentioned, this is something that works best when plugged up to the Nintendo Switch dock itself. That way, you're basically looking at something that you can plug up and use at home or in an environment like that. But realistically, this is something that I think comes in at a cheap enough price point that anyone out there that's really considering getting another controller might find the best solution is this one right here.